Asava, this is Laserboard, and welcome to today's video, guys. Today, we're going to be talking about the best classes to use for Endgame. I'm also going to be telling you guys what type of stuff you should be looking for when you're trying to complete your build, and why certain classes are more easier to complete Endgame than other classes. We're also going to be going over all the four different classes, and for those of you who are trying to get CT clears, I'm also going to be telling you guys what is the most effective way for you guys to actually complete this. So if you're a solo player and you want to up your CP clears, you want to make sure you're getting gold tier clears, and you want to make sure you're playing on the right class if you plan on playing the game completely solo, well, today I'm going to tell you guys exactly what classes you should be using. So if all of this sounds like something you're definitely interested, a like would be greatly appreciated. And let's talk about what are the best classes to play solos. So one of the biggest things about this game, of course, is getting to that end game content. And with that end game content comes completing expeditions. But if that wasn't just the actual outcome of the expeditions, you also have to complete this in a timely fashion because there is no point in you doing expeditions if you're not even getting gold tier, silver tier, or even bronze tier when completing this because that's going to drastically reduce the amount of gear you get and with that drastic reduction, it's going to make your endgame a little bit more troublesome. So what classes are the best ones? I'm going to number them from 1 to 4. And I'm also going to be telling you what gear you need to be looking out for when completing. So the first class I want to mention that I believe is definitely the fastest and easiest one to complete. Not because it does more damage. Not because it, um, you know, it has a lot of components to it. It's just because... It is extremely easy to get really good gear. You theoretically just need two armor pieces to make a, a very reliable build. And that is going to be the Trickster. Yes, guys, still after the patch, the Trickster is still a very, very easy class to complete solos in CT15s. You need a very minimal setup. You basically only need two, two pieces to actually make it work. And that is just about it. So instead of having to farm five pieces... Or having to farm five different uh you know three different weapons with the trickster you only really need to farm two major things number one you need a really good shotgun and number two uh you know you just put piston rounds on that and you get unlimited unlimited bullets and you guys are good to go there's actually two ways to get unlimited ammo i'll probably have a separate video going over that explaining how you're going to be able to do that but that is pretty much what you need with the trickster you just need a really good gun and two armor pieces so that's about it you just need one gun and two armor pieces. so think about it that way trickster is super easy not because it does more damage even though it does do, do it does do a lot of damage but because you only need two set pieces i'm going to explain towards later in the video what these pieces are and what you need to be looking out for the second class i want to mention here of course is the technomancer now the technomancer as you guys know is the highest damage class currently right now this is another one that does not uh, need any optimal gear dependence. It does not need a lot of gear that you have to say, I need this mod. I need to have this particular gear. The advantage you have here with the, both the Trickster and the Technomancer is that they both have really good uh, kind of anomaly built weapons, not weapons, but bullets. So that allows them to not be too highly dependent on gear. Now, this is why one of the biggest reasons why we got a patch, because people were clearing these out really easily uh with the way it currently was so they had to kind of you know nerf the uh nerf the bullets a little bit to be make the classes a make other classes a little bit more viable when it came to endgame now the cool thing about the technomancer once again he's also very similar to the trickster he's able to get unlimited bullets as well and the advantage you have with him is that his bullets not only do uh damage per bullet but they also do damage uh, around the enemy because it does have an AOE effect. Uh, so it helps you exponentially. And you could theoretically boost this AOE effect with the correct build and the correct armor. The Technomancer is not heavily dependent on gear like the Trickster. But some particular gear is more beneficial than others. So I would probably put the Trickster and the Technomancer kind of like in a tie for first place to be honest. Because they are very good and not heavily dependent when it comes to using gear. The next class I want to recommend, guys, is the Devastator. Now, I run a Devastator. I actually run all classes, but I primarily have been playing on my Devastator the majority of the time. And the Devastator is actually pretty easy to compete. Now, the cool thing about him is that you don't have to worry about dying. So, if you don't want to be too dependent on gear, and you want to make sure that you're 
maybe not being uh, putting the most majority of the damage, but you want to make sure that your skills are the ones that are actually doing the damage. That is where the Devastator shines. The Devastator doesn't shine primarily on using his weapon the majority of the time and, you know, causing a lot of damage with his weapon. Where he actually shines is on using his skills because his skill cooldown is very, very low. I mean, you could do Earthquake skill skill almost every six seconds. That's really... And you're able to get three of these. So that's crazy, crazy on the amount you're able to do that. You're also able to get two Gravity Leaps. You're able to get two Impales. So it is a crazy, crazy character to use when it comes to using his abilities. If you are playing a Devastator and you're trying to use your gun the majority of the time, you're probably, probably playing the Devastator wrong. I'll probably have a video out for you guys if you guys would like to see it on the channel on how to play each individual class. Of course, each individual class has a different play style, but there is a correct way of actually playing it and an incorrect playing it. So that is what uh, it is pretty much crazy. Now, the thing with the Devastator... He does require a few sets of pieces to actually make him super OP and activate those bonuses when he uses his skills. So he is more gear dependent than the other two classes that we talked about, the Trickster and the Technomancer. But still, I would definitely put him in second as a Technomancer and a Trickster are kind of tied when it comes to, uh, you know, first place. Then we have the last class, which is my fellow Pyromancer. The problem with the Pyromancer is that he is very gear dependent not only is he very gear dependent but he's also very mod dependent and uh, he is a very good class once you get all the gear unfortunately when the demo came out i was expecting him not to be too gear dependent i did expect him to be mod dependent but i didn't expect him to be too heavily gear dependent he is actually very uh, gear dependent but when you get that gear He's actually one of the fastest clears when it comes to completing certain expeditions. The reason is because he has a lot of AOE effects and he's also able to target multiple enemies at once and inflict a lot of damage. Unfortunately for the Pyromancer, you are going to have to do more farming than you would with your other counterparts uh, as opposed to playing a Technomancer, a Trickster, or a Devastator. Now let's talk about what you will be needing to actually be able to do these clears. So let's go ahead and take a look at the gears. So for the Devastator guys and for the Pyromancer, you're kind of looking for two primary things. Number one, the gear is not so dependent upon it being a legendary gear. But what you're actually looking for is for dependence when it comes to being able to have gear that actually has the following white stats. The white stats are the ones that are going to be primarily your focal point when it comes to this particular build. So for the Devastator, the Pyromancer, your number one attribute, guys, is going to be Anomaly Power. Anomaly Power and Cooldown Reduction. Those are the main two that you want to make sure your gear has. The other one doesn't really matter, like Close Range Damage, Skill Life Leech. Even though I like Skill Life Leech a little bit better than Close Range Damage. Um, th those are the main ones you want to look if you're a Pyromancer and you're a Devastator. Anomaly Power and Cooldown Reduction. These are extremely important. The reason why these are extremely important is because with these two classes, you're primarily going to be getting a lot of damage coming from your skill. So the faster your skill is able to come back, the better that's going to be. And you're also getting a lot of damage from your anomaly power because the faster your, uh, you know, the more damage your anomaly power does, the better off you're going to be with these particular builds. So if you guys are playing a Devastator and you're playing a Pyromancer, look for gear that has anomaly power and also has cooldown reduction. The other one I want to rec recommend here that I think it's extremely important as well is the status power. The status power is actually really, really good. You want to make sure you have your status power role. For example, the god role for me primarily would probably be this. Anomaly power, status power, cooldown reduction. That is the complete god role that you want to have when it comes to putting a build together. You want to make sure you have anomaly power, status power, cooldown reduction. That is the god role for both the Pyromancer and the Devastator. Now let's talk about the Trickster and, of course, the Technomancer. All right, so for the Trickster and the Technomancer, what you're going to be looking for are the following. You're going to be looking for bonus firepower. This is going to be your number one priority. You want to make sure that any gear that you get has bonus firepower. That's going to be your main, main focal point. Number two, you want to make sure it comes with close range damage because that means that you're going to be multiplying the damage not only for the firepower, but when the enemy is actually pretty close to you. Number two is you want to make sure you have a long range damage. Now, for example, for this one right here, I have cooldown reduction, which is still pretty decent, but you want to make sure 
you have bonus firepower, close range damage, and long range damage. That's going to make sure you're outputting the most DPS you possibly can. And that is what makes these two characters really viable. The fact that you're able to actually be able to get a lot of damage from any gear, whether it be blue, purple, or gold, or legendary, as long as those three stats are present. Bonus fire, close range damage, and of course, long range damage. Now you could theoretically get away with cooldown reduction because that's going to let you spam your skills a little bit faster. Or you could also get away with anything that drops with being able to leash uh, any sort of health back from you guys. But the main two focal ones here are bonus fire and close range damage since your majority of the time you're always going to be up close with the enemy. But the god roll here, bonus fire, close range damage, and long range damage. So that is the best way you guys could actually complete solos when it comes to doing expeditions. I'm going to tell you guys right now, the main focal point when completing an expedition is making sure you're completing it in gold. It doesn't really matter if you're doing CT10s, CT12s, CT15s. The main focal point that you want to be focusing on is making sure you do it gold. The reason why is because this is going to help you get those legendaries quicker and it's going to help you get the mods you want. The main focal point here is getting mods and being able to apply these mods to your gear. Now, I have builds for each individual character. We will be making updates for the patch. So we are going to be changing a couple nods when it comes to the Trickster and also the Technomancer. Uh, our Devastator one will also be getting updated and we will be changing, making a new Devastator one. So will our Pyromancer. So stay tuned for all the builds that are coming your way. I do hope you guys are enjoying our artist coverage. If you are, do me a huge favor, guys. Drop a like, drop a comment. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Turn on those notifications and let me know, guys, what CT are you guys clearing in gold so far? Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video.